gotta be said, mate, probably because today's topic is my primary area of expertise, has been for about 15 years, and no, it's not Inventor. But needless to say, I think over the years, I've probably given this team with an Autodesk more shit than any other team with an Autodesk. But I've got to hand it to them this time around. They've played an absolute blinder here with this feature, and they deserve every bit of praise and credit where credit's due. Don't worry, still got something to bitch and moan about. <laughs> it just wouldn't be the same without it. So even if you currently don't use any of this stuff, or if you think none of this concerns you, mate, I don't know, you, may, you might just want to casually absorb this, watch it from afar with passing interest, because you just never know when knowing all this stuff might serve you well in the future. And for the first time in a long time, mate, I'm actually talking about Autodesk Vault on the channel, and a new feature that they've brought into the 2023 release that they've called the Vault Gateway. Now, bringing all this to the market maybe a year or two ago might have yielded more of a buzz around this feature than it otherwise has done because it's all to do with remote access to your engineering data whilst you're off-site. So when the COOF uh, was in full swing and the world basically shut down and lost its mind, uh, it wasn't that long ago, I'm sure you haven't forgotten, but everyone who worked in an office was basically sent away to work from home. Except engineering companies using the likes of Autodesk Vault well, they couldn't send the engineering data in a vault home with all the staff. So all that remained on-prem on the vault server physically located in the office. Generally speaking anyway, but you see the thing is about Autodesk Vault is that although it runs upon Microsoft's Internet Information Services or IIS, contrary to its name, Vault's actually exclusively a local area network constrained application, meaning you can only see and connect to the vault server if you're actually physically connected to the same network as that server. So once you've been sent home and you working within the comfy confines of your own home, on your sofa, on your own Wi-Fi. Well, how do you connect back to the Vault server when it's back in the office? Well, the answer has always been to use a company-provided VPN or a virtual private network. This basically creates like a two-way digital tunnel from your local PC or your laptop at home back into the office network and allows you to see all the networking resources in the office. And without wanting to waste five minutes waffling on about all the potential inconveniences of a VPN, the primary one is that they only work when they're actually turned on, mate. And they can sometimes disconnect and drop out on you. I guess you can think of a VPN as having similar drawbacks to the old dial-up modem internet days if you're old enough to remember back to those days. And this is where Vault Gateway enters the chat because that was the problem, mate. And this is the solution. So the Vault Gateway essentially lets you or anyone you allow securely access your Vault server from anywhere in the world without needing an active VPN connection out from or into the office. And once this is enabled, the gateway creates a web URL address unique to your site that only you know, and you should absolutely be keeping it to yourself and your staff. And then wherever you are in the world, mate, you can punch that web URL address into the Vault login prompt and it's gonna redirect or tunnel you back to your Vault server in the office. Sort of like, sort of an Autodesk provided VPN service. Now to be clear, this is essentially a redirection service over HTTPS. It's not endpoint to endpoint. Your vault traffic is routed through an Autodesk provided regional data center. It kind of has to be. And at the moment, I can only see two at, the, at this early stage. One of them's in North Virginia on the east coast of the US and one of them's in Dublin Island in Europe. And I believe these are AWS data centers, Amazon Web Services. And just to be clear, this is a pass-through service. Autodesk are not storing, caching any customer data they don't want to. And even if they did, the Vault team don't have that kind of budget for data storage. Uh, they're not logging any transactions as it happens, as the data is passing through, nothing's getting logged whatsoever. Uh, there's denial of service protection on the gateway as well as increased security requirements. And I've thought this through quite a fair bit. There is some limitations as well. One deal breaker actually is that if you use Windows authentication on your Vault, uh, then the gateway can't be used because it can only be used with Vault accounts and Autodesk ID logins. But to conjure up another nutshell, mate, to put a story into, you're going to connect into your Vault using this gateway address instead of your normal server name when you're off-site. And then when you check in or check something out from the Vault over that gateway, the data is going to be sent from your Vault server over HTTPS to the regional data center, which is then going to redirect all of that data to your laptop or PC, all done in the background and you just don't notice anything. All you do is just log into that gateway address instead of the regular server name. And the gateway is going to support client connections from version 2022.1 onwards, with the server itself supporting client connections from three versions back. But 2022.1 will be the earliest client that can actually connect to a gateway. Now, I'm based in England in the UK, which means I'm geographically quite close to the Dublin data center in Ireland. So my testing 
done through that gateway. So far, it's been pretty good. It's been quite snappy, but how that's gonna actually play out for someone based in a region that's quite physically far from a gateway data center, don't know. Like I say, I can only see two of them at the moment, but the Vault team have just said to me that there should be more of them. So whilst this accessibility feature has got quite a lot of benefits for working from home, like I say, the usefulness of it doesn't actually stop there. It could be if you're out in the field with a laptop, you can now easily get directly at your vault without messing about with VPN connections. You can provide a supplier access into your vault without having to mess around with VPN permissions, or I don't know, you could use this as just like as a backup as well. Like if you do want to use VPN from this point onwards and that's your go-to connection, you can have this as a backup in case your VPN ever does go down and offline. In terms of connectivity and performance, it's likely gonna be slightly worse than the direct VPN connection into the office. Your mileage is always gonna vary, but the convenience of this, just a single address, might trump the dip in file transfer speeds to and from the vault, depending on your own testing. And the new web address for the gateway is fixed and permanent, but if at any point you do need to generate a new gateway address, like if you've given one to a supplier and you've fallen out with them and you want to withdraw that, well, the data management console in vault has got a gateway manager where you can delete the existing gateway address and generate a new one. The gateway address is intentionally a bit random and nonsensical to make it borderline impossible for bad actors to guess your URL and then try and hack in. If you're wondering, hmm, it does look a bit weird that actually. I wonder if I can shorten that address down using something like bit.ly for a redirect. Nope, <laughs> no, I've tried that already, it doesn't work. All right, so far, well, this has been pretty positive. It's all looking good. What's the catch, Neil? You said at the start some, there was, was something to bitch and moan about, so what's my boggle? <laughs> what, what was the catch? Well. I think it was always going to be inevitable that this was going to be limited to the Vault Professional tier of the Vault product line. So users of Vault Basic and Vault Workgroup won't be getting this as Vault Professional only, but that's not a boggle. Most annoyingly, and something that I absolutely don't agree with, and in some ways takes the shine off of this quite considerably, is the requirement that everyone has to pay for a dedicated Vault Professional subscription just to run the gateway. That's not cool, and I'll explain why. This is a new feature of Vault Professional 2023, and aside from this, to be perfectly frank, there's absolutely all else of note in Vault Professional 2023. This itself is the headlining hero new feature. Everything else is just little tweaks here and there. And the fact that you have to pay for an extra subscription just to run this new feature if you want to, is basically locking away new functionality from an already paid for subscription service that you're already paying for behind another paywall. I'm not okay with that. Imagine already paying for Netflix, but then having to take out a second Netflix subscription just to watch the Squid Game. It'd be f***ing hell on. Imagine having to take out a second annual subscription to Photoshop just to use a new brush that they've just added into it. That's, like, that's literally what's happening here. But before you grab your pitchforks and sharpening tools, this isn't exactly unprecedented, which doesn't make it okay, but they did this with the job processor, for example, which they did eventually backpedal on to a certain extent. It's not quite the same. The job processor happened at the time when floating network licenses were a thing. So you could run that from a shared pool and you could run it out of hours as well, like automated on batch jobs. But this is now something that you absolutely, you know, if, if you choose to use this, you have to buy a full Vault Pro subscription for, create an Autodesk account for a made up non-person and then use it exclusively just for the gateway. Look, objectively, this is an insanely massively useful new feature to 2023 and a huge advance forward for Autodesk Vault. But in addition to the usual routine Autodesk price rises that happen year on year, I can't condone new features in an annual subscription service only being accessible if you pay more. Or in this case, pay for another subscription. No, absolutely not. But I'm gonna stop short of throwing shade at any one particular team. Like I've, I've had talks in the past with various product managers within Autodesk for, on various different teams. And I do know that their licensing direction is driven in some cases by powers detached from the people who actually work on the product. So I don't know who made this stupid decision, but either way, it was a dick move. Never mind. as immoral and as stupid as it might be, you just know a ton of companies are going to have to end up paying for it anyway, because like, what choice have they got? It's that useful. And I also don't think the argument of, well, most companies who would want to use this anyway could probably afford to is okay either. That's not okay. But anyway, that's the Vault Gateway for 2023. It is slick. It works, it's great. It's a seamless way of remotely accessing your vault without the need for VPN. And hey, if you're about to subscribe to Vault or any other Autodesk license, may use my store link in the description first. Literally click on that before renewing or buying. will help support this channel at zero cost to you and help you watch more videos like this one. Thanks for watching, my name is Neil Cross. That was the Vault Gateway. This is Tech3D and I'll see you in the next one. Toodles.